Hey guys, what's up? Crafty Sheep here back with another story Sunday where we look into the horror aspect of visual novels. This is called It Paints Me. I have never played it before, I've never seen it played before, so let's just get straight into it. Every night I find myself alone in the studio, curtains drawn tight, my neat row of paints, palette and brushes in the same place on the drawer by the easel. The canvas upon it sits, always unfinished, Marie's half-painted face frozen in an empty song. It's laid out, as it always is when I awaken here. Marie is nowhere to be found. She must still be at the theater. Even when the curtains fall and the stage lights dim, the night is forever young to its star sopranos. I would always wait outside her dressing room, <clears throat> roses in hand, scores of other bright-eyed admirers spilling through the halls, though she was alone mine, was, though she alone was mine, and I was hers. It's cold, bitterly cold tonight, but still I draw the curtains and open the window wide. There's a stench in the room, deep and damp and sickly sweet, but I can't ever seem to be rid of. Besides that, the fumes from the linseed oil make my head spin. Like every night, I measure out my paints, arranging the small dabs of color on my palette from lightest to darkest. Titanium white and... cadmium yellow to corpse brown and lamp black. I wet my brush with oil and gently start mixing the pigments. It feels just like a little bit of magic, watching them swirl and mix, forming new colors from old. Oh, I paint her, I hate paint face. I paint her face. To mix a tone as pale as her skin and apply with generous dab of oil to the Marie on my canvas. But the paint just doesn't blend. The color of her cheek stands out like a garish smear. I sigh and scrape it off with the palette knife. I mix a deep blend of black and red for the background instead. I must have painted and repainted the same background countless times. To say it's difficult to paint by lamplight, my muse nowhere in sight, is an understatement, of course. But lately, these nightly hours are the only time I find myself able to <clears throat> lift my brush. I stop every few strokes. Spirits, it hurts. I had joked that the pain that forced me away from the tailor's shop meant I could finally return to my paintings, at the very least. I was never any good at humor. Marie had sensed my worries, consoled me sweetly in her voice that could charm stone to life. Oh, Sam, don't worry. I have rules lined up for months ago. Oh, for months. Go ahead and paint. We can still live comfortably. It hurt. A small part of it did, beyond the physical, beyond the ailments, to seek her permission. To be unable to care for my darling the way I had when we were young, brimming with talent but crushingly unknown. Well, she had been. I was and still am nothing. But perhaps, finally, it would now be my turn to bring my vision to the world. If only it didn't hurt so damn much. Time passes, and I still don't manage more than a few strokes, a small patch of dark over an already wet canvas. <clears throat> or perhaps time hasn't passed at all. The broken clock on the wall would suggest as much. Perhaps the seconds have lain still, the world outside unchanging, and I the only thing that moves. Have I moved? 
is repeating the same brush strokes like clockwork doll movement. I shiver and sigh. Perhaps sleep would be a better endeavor. Perhaps the next night will meet more success. I stand, setting aside my paints and palette, and slowly move to shut the windows. I stop. There, out in the front garland, garden, barely lit by a street lamp, stands a figure that can only be Marie. <clears throat> she bids goodbye to another figure, tall and broad-shouldered, and then she laughs, a beautiful laugh, a heartfelt laugh, embraces him before he makes his reluctant exit on a carriage stopped by the gate. For a moment, I don't know what to think. A friend, a co-star, perhaps an admiral, tenor, she mentioned every now and then. I didn't see his face, but Marie's social circle had always eclipsed my own. <clears throat> it must be, but why would he come to our home? Why would she laugh that way? Oh, you're getting jealous. In the garden, in the midst of walking to the front door, humming to herself, Marie suddenly looks up. For a moment, her eyes go wide, and she blinks as if shaking herself from a daze. I instinctively step back from the windows. Perhaps it's guilt that makes me do so. Marie is finally home, and oh, I've missed her so. How could the first thing I think upon seeing my darling be the worst thoughts my mind could conjure? For the first time in many, many nights, I feel just well enough to leave the studio. I'll prepare Marie a pot of her favorite chamomile tea. I'll listen as she tells me of the nights, the theater, the thousand small anecdotes she never runs out of, and maybe, just maybe, ask her again to sit for a portrait for me, like she used to. The house feels larger than it used to. Perhaps I was shut in the studio too long. Still, how could I so quickly become a stranger to my own home? Memories are fuzzy. The years blur together like a wash of oil colors. My mother and I, carrying our sparse luggage, stepping inside for the first time. My stepfather laughing, his elbows on the breakfast table, chattering over something he'd read in the paper. Then silent hallways and empty rooms. And then myself, welcoming my new bride to the solitary halls hanging our newly taken portraits above the mantel. The walls are barren now. I feel the walls in the dark, leaving sickly trails of paint behind, tracing the places where I used to hang. Photographs. Walls are laid bare. The pictures that hung on the pale wallpaper are gone. Blurry gray photographs of my parents, myself as a boy, and Marie. Oh, so many pictures of Marie, each displayed in a filigree frame. Gone. Why are they gone? Pell wallpaper stands bare, stripped to its bone. Confused, but with nowhere else to go, I continue through the house. As I walk, I pass the furniture my stepfather left me. The shelves and tables that always seemed so large and grand as a boy, now missing or mantled in thick white linen. They remind me of corpses on a hospital table, lying dead still, covered in sheets. <clears throat> Marie? I tried to call out, but phlegm blocks my throat. I cough, long and drawn and wet, and then once more attempt to voice her name. Marie it slicks off my tongue like a serpent uncoiling. I had always loved her name, so tender and sweet, free of harsh syllables. Marie. It was a name like an impression for painted in soft strokes with fine oil brush. It was the greatest joy in the world to join my name to hers. Silence fills the halls, a long, drawn-out silence, a held breath. Finally, my darling answers. Sam? 
Is this a dream? I cough again, another long wet trail dripping from my lips. Is it a good dream, darling? I don't know, it feels like a nightmare. An awful, wretched nightmare. I limp towards the sound of her voice, so musical, so lovely, even at the blink of tears. Even at the brink of tears. Don't cry, darling, I want to say, but thick syrup... Don't cry, darling, I want to say, but thick syrup liquid fills my throat. No matter what troubles you, I am here. She stands on the edge of the staircase, shaking, a candlestick in her hand. The steps are st sticky and wet. I inch carefully, practically at a crawl, not to slip. My darling lifts the candle as I approach. In the dark of the house, its flickering flame almost blinds me. I don't see the expression on her face as she screams. Huh. Why is she screaming? Marie, where are you, my darling? Every word feels like a dagger punching my throat. I limped down each hall, leaving a trail of steps that feel damp and heavy, sick and wet. I tried the door to our bedroom. No, Marie's room. I had started sleeping in the spare one when my coughing fits would wake her in the night. It was cold, so cold, alone, but my darling needed her rest. <clears throat> the knob is slick and hard to twist, my hands slipping on the brass. Finally, I managed to push the door open. Well, it's completely dark when I peer inside. I know it's empty. No warmth, no flesh, no sound of sweet breath within. I continue down the hall. I trudge, my steps heavy and wet, trying not to slip over the thick, slick surface. Marie, what's wrong, darling? Please come out. I don't understand. The dining room is empty. Truly empty. The shelves where the china and silverware were once neatly stacked now gape hollow. The walnut table is covered in a thick white sheet. The matching set of chairs removed. I rest against the blanketed table. My hand leaves a ruddy smear against the sheets. Must be more paint. I thought it, though it's hard to make out in the dark. I needed spectacles for quite some time, but Maria had never liked the bookish type. I continue on through the familiar yet unfamiliar house, my steps strained and slow, my breath short, sticky, wet. Marie, where are you? Oh, Marie, it hurts. Won't you come to me? I hear the front door slam shut. Must be freezing cold out. Why has she gone to the garden? I tread the sound with new urgency. I tread to the sound with new urgency, uncaring of the sticky, wet floors, forgetting for just a moment the pain that snaps and burns through my flesh. I reach for the oily, damp knob. Why is the whole house, like, melty? What is going on here? Don't, Sam, please. Her voice rings from behind the door. I don't understand, darling. Have I done something to upset you? Her sobs echo loudly. I never thought an ugly sound could come from my darling's lips, but her words. I love you, Sam. I always will, but I can't bear to see you like this. Please, I beg you, return to where you came. Wow, that's... Wow! What a bitch! You can't be here. I've moved on now. What? Return where? Dearest, you aren't making sense. Moved on? I'm your husband, Marie. What on earth is there to move on from? Please remember, Sam. You were ill. You were ill for a long, long time. And you never recovered. 
I know that I'm unwell, Marie, but you said we would still... Are you leaving me because I can't care for you anymore? Is that why? You left me. You're dead, Sam. Oh. You've been dead for more than a year. This is a joke, darling. It's a cruel one. Do you want me dead? Is that it? Am I better off dead to you? My darling does nothing but sob behind the door. How quickly I regret my words. Oh, if only I could see her face, look into her eyes, reassure her, and see that she loves me still. Twist of the knob with my slick, oily hands. No, don't come out, please. On the other end, with a sharp gasp, my darling grasps the knob closed, pushing the weight of her small frame against the weathered wood. Don't come out! Let her go. I let go of the door, my hand sticking off its oily surface. Forgive me, Marie. I can see you don't wish to speak to me right now. But whatever you do, whatever this is about, I'll be waiting in the studio. I leave the door. I leave my darling alone, sobbing in the garden. It's dark, so very dark, but dawn will soon paint that dim black sky. I retrace my slick, wet footsteps through the hall, up the staircase, one trudging damp step at a time. Spirits, it hurts, it burns. I feel no breath in my lungs. My chest could be a hollow cavity, slippery and wet, spilling with hot, sickly fluid. It hurts, oh, it hurts. I stagger into a tall, sheet-covered object, the linen sliding off with the grasp of my clumsy, slick fingers. It's Marie's floor-length mirror. No. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Is he a zombie? I'm in the studio, a dark, dim studio, as empty as it is every night. Curtains are shut, the lamps are unlit. The palette is a mess of murky colors, rust reds, corpse brown, a musky, sickly, sweet, rotting stench fills the room. I don't know why the smell of linseed oil ever bothered me. After all, I no longer breathe. <clears throat> the handle of the door turns behind me. Slowly it creaks open and a figure steps inside. It's me. He limps more than he steps, crooked motions against the floor, dragging his body along like a wet, wide brush of swatches of red pool at, as swath, swatches of red pool at his feet. I watch him pull himself before the canvas. Samuel. Icon of affliction. He speaks my mother's voice, a pitched cry of command and dependency, diversion and affection, pride and disappointment. Give up your suffering. Give up this. Come into the earth with me. My hands are too slick to hold my brush. I stab it into my flesh and fix it between my bones then dip the bristles into his blood. Sammy. He speaks my stepfather's voice, wistful, choking back tears, the same cadence of his goodbye as he hugged me against his uniform, the dog tags cold around his neck. Don't suffer anymore, Sam. Forget your pain. You're nothing already. Come into the void with us. My brush drying, I plunge it into his chest, wet with my oily breath, wet it with his oily breath. 
Damn. He speaks with my voice, hoarse and raspy and tired, so very, very tired. This won't make you worthy of love. Not the world, not Marie's, not your friends or peers or critics. Come back to our grave and our suffering. You know, I don't do this for love. <clears throat> I clean my brush with paint thinner, knocking over the jars it spills across the drawer onto the wet, soaken floor. I dry the bristles on my warm rotting shirt, then soak it in the thick, white mucus of his tears. My words are only partially true, just as his words are not fully wrong. Neither my rotting corpse nor the memory of what once was Sam will gain a thing from this toil. I paint the hours away, or perhaps take no time at all. The clock on the wall never turns its hands, suggesting that the world lies still. The seconds never pass, and I am the only thing that moves within it. It hurts. Oh, it hurts. Heavy, syrupy tears flood my vision, fill my throat, my chest, choking me. Every movement of my hands leaves cracks in what's left of my brittle bones. He stares at me all the while, silent, still, like a mirror. If I loved him, I would stop. I would crawl to my grave like he wishes. But I love this more than I love myself. I birth him from within me. As I create, so too I am born. And he and I are beautiful. Self-portrait. Interesting. News of our story blah, blah, blah. by Endis Morgan Mizumi. Okay, thank you for playing. Okay, I'm curious what happens if I force the door open, so let's try to do that. Skip. I will paint her face. Skip. The photographs. Skip. Force the door open. No, not until you tell me what's going on. Are you leaving me, darling, after everything? I need you. I need you. My darling utters a sharp cry as the hinges groan against the frame, loosening her grip as she stumbles back onto the cobblestone path. I instantly forget her sharp words as I limp towards her side. Marie, are you alright? I'm so sorry. Stop it, Sam. I, I'll i keep you alive. Every time I sing, I'll sing for you. I'll keep you in my song, in my art. Oh, but it hurts her shrill voice grates against the ooze spilling forth from my ears. It hurts, it hurts. My head rings, my chest is a hollow cavity, slippery and wet, flowing with hot, stickly, sickly fluid. I cough and cough and spew more syrup, warm liquid from my lips. Your art, it was always about you. Your frame, your voice, your needs, your wants, your desires. You are a work of art. Of course, but did you ever think about me? Did you ever think about poor Sam dying alone in the cold white room? Poor Sam who couldn't even hold a brush in his hand in the end. Poor Sam left to rot into nothing. A year was all it took to forget me. I'm shaking her, leaving smears of dark, muddy paint over her pale shoulders. The next moment, she breaks from me, running blindly into the street. The carriage doesn't stop for her. Of course it doesn't. 
My dearest is a wisp of dark curls, a black gown billowing in the night like a shade. She should be light as a breath, soft as mist. The song that comes is the scream of her breaking bones, her ripping flesh, the breath that leaves her lungs. <clears throat> ah, but every sound my darling makes is beautiful. I scoop her master flesh and deep crimson hair in my arms. Her blood pools around me, syrupy and dark, a color so deep no artist's pigment could hope to capture. The purest scarlet or vermilion red, a dull stain in comparison. It is not Sam that I see staring back at the deep pool of our blood. My darling is a lovely creature, even broken. I gently carry her up the steps, one slip damp, crooked step at a time, setting her mass of jutted bone, a viscera and flesh on the velvet seat in my studio. The fabric soaks it deep, so very deep. It's dark and it's every night. I leave the lamps unlit, the windows shut tight. How strange that stench of linseed oil never bothered me. After all, I no longer breathe. My darling sits still, ever so still, not a breath escaping her broken flesh. What a lovely model. Oh, what a wonderful thing. All the more beautiful now that it surely hurts to sing. Oh, it's agony to hold a brush. It always is, but I can bear it. <laughs> After all, who can truly create without pain? Ending one, Muse. Okay, as far as I know, there's only two endings to this game. So, it looks to me like I got them both. Um, I liked it. I did. It was a little bit confusing, though. I'm not sure, like, is he a zombie? You know, because he's all mutilated and dripping wet and all this sort of stuff and the sickly sweet smell that's the smell of decay usually um so i'm not sure if he's a zombie or what so that was it paints me um i will have a link to it in the description down below if you want to go check it out yourself and uh maybe you pick some different options I think that all leads to the same two endings, but hey, you never know. Anyways, I like that. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel out. It means a lot to me. Let me know what you thought of the game in the comments. Do you think he was a zombie? Because that's the first thing I thought of. Let me know in the comments, or you can leave me a horror game suggestion, and we'll try to get to it. But without further ado, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. You stay tuned and stay crafty. Until next time, bye!